Hello again, I am Blunty. Now, I wasn't planning to pile this Switch video on top of the other Switch videos I've been doing lately, but I had a request on the Switch video I did yesterday, so here we are. Now, you've decided you want to get a Nintendo Switch, maybe even pre-ordered it. Maybe you've watched my first thoughts hands-on hardware video review, and maybe you're feeling pretty comfortable with your decision, and you've measured your expectations tempering the inevitable hype of a new gaming platform with a little dose or two of reality and a few hard-earned lessons from history. And now you're thinking about different ways to enhance your experience, your comfort and your convenience. Or maybe you're just a friend or relative of a soon-to-be new Switch owner. Either way, obviously, it's accessory time. Some accessories are useful, some are just a bit neat, and I've had a poke through what's out there right now headed for launch day and selected a few that caught my eye as perhaps worth paying attention to. Kicking off with the purely aesthetic, now officially there's only one skin kit so far, the Zelda Collector's Edition skins. And if you're a Link super fan and into slightly tacky looking kitty sticker things, then sure, go for it. Personally, I'm going to give Dbrand a try. Now these people have been doing phone and laptop skins for quite some time now. I haven't tried them myself, but they do seem to have a decent reputation. You can custom order your own combination of colours and imitation materials and textures like leather, metallic and wood, all from within a pretty nice web-based visual interface. Personally, I have already gone ahead and ordered a bright and sharp looking yellow and white combo. One, because I kind of like that combination of colours, and two, because as a YouTube guy doing Switch demos and stuff going forward, it's going to make it pop nicely on camera. At least, hopefully. I will of course do a video on how easy it is to apply and how well it fits and the finishes and all that kind of stuff once I get it. On the more practical side of things though, for transporting your Switch around, there are two main options, either simple cases for just the portable section, the tablet and the Joy-Cons, or larger bags and cases for taking the entire thing. The Hori Tough Pouch is officially licensed and seems to be one of those semi-rigid cases. It's simple, it's clean, it has a little space for a few extra game cards. The Traveller Deluxe Travel Case from RDS Industries is nicer, though it seems a bit more robust, it has a nice two-tone on-brand white and red zipper, and a handy handle up top. A small case for games and SD cards, and a small zip pouch inside. And the Hyperking EVA case, or possibly EVA case, is a rigid shell type case, simple, nondescript, subtle, with game storage space, and a net pouch useful for keeping your earphones and USB charge cable out of trouble, but still easy to get to. If, however, you want something more significant to carry the entire Switch hardware kit in, dock and all, You've got the Everywhere Messenger Bag. It comes with divided pouches for all the main hardware, even the Joy-Con grip, or possibly the Pro Controller instead if you like. It also comes with a separate pouch for the portable section, so you can choose to bring the entire thing or just the portable section, which is a pretty convenient way to do it. RDS also has a Rigid Pack Deluxe Traveler Kit, again with their stylish red and white zip and Switch branded zip toggle. Slightly less room inside this than the messenger bag we just looked at, and it doesn't have the separate pouch for the screen, but it is certainly more compact and tidier. So that's style and convenience out of the way, now to the most practical side of things, comfort. The Switch comes with what they call the Joy-Con Comfort Grip to turn the separated Joy-Cons into a more traditional controller arrangement, but it's just a passive lump of plastic to hold the controllers together. The Joy-Con controller's own batteries are still in play. Now, they have up to 30 hours of use between charges apparently, so that may be quite sufficient for most people, but there is also the Joy-Con Charge Grip. So now you have to remember to keep the charge grip batteries charged in order to charge the Joy-Con batteries while you play with it connected to the charge grip. It's it's weird and clumsy and a bit redundant arrangement, but it may be quite handy for some folk to have an extra long battery life from their controllers. I would recommend you see how you go with just the Joy-Cons on their own in the passive grip before you invest in one of these. You may not even want one. Alternatively, if you've chosen to buy an extra set of Joy-Con controllers, there's a charging dock that will handle two pairs at once. There's a grip kit from Surge to make the two-player mode Joy-Con configuration a bit more comfortable and balanced. Now, I did find the Joy-Cons a bit awkward in their naked state, thanks to the asymmetry of the trigger button, so this clip-over case-like accessory may well be a good investment if you're going to be two-playering quite a lot. Then there's the flex case, designed to make the Joy-Cons more comfortable for the single-player configurations, both while attached to the screen and separated for games like ARMS. 
They've got a big fat ass at the bottom for a more significant grip. They certainly look like they will be quite comfortable, especially if you've got big hands like mine. And then there's also these armor guards, similar to the flex case idea, but with a slightly less bulky design. The back grip becomes perfectly symmetrical by the looks of things, and the face remains uncovered. I think these ones would be my personal choice. They seem to balance the aims of the other two in quite a useful way. Also, they come in yellow, which should work quite well with that skin I'm going to try out. <laughs> For the screen, there's going to be the usual selection of various screen protectors. You will very likely be utterly spoiled for choice here, because you certainly are when it comes to mobile phone protectors. My only real advice here, at least so far, is to go for one of the tempered glass options. The plastic ones are almost universally garbage. Now we come to the Hori Playstand, which at first blush may seem pretty pointless as the Switch's tablet section has its own built-in kickstand for keeping it at a useful viewing distance while in desktop mode. But the reason you want the Hori Stand is because unlike using the kickstand, with this you'll be able to use the USB socket on the bottom edge of the Switch for attaching USB power so you're not stuck on battery only mode in desktop play. It also lifts it up off the desk a bit, which could help with viewing angles, and you also get a nice variety of angles to set it at. It does seem like it's pretty uninspiring as far as build quality goes. It looks to be very plasticky, but it is cheap, so if it only lasts a year before it breaks or something, it's not such a huge tragedy. Lastly, you'll find having a USB Type-C charging cable, or two, quite handy. Of course, anyone will work. It is a standard cable in use today by more and more Android phones and other accessories. But there is, of course, a Switch-branded one from Orsley, which does seem like a nice choice, as its connectors do seem nice and significant, so they should put up with the high-travel lifestyle it'll deal with alongside the Switch. Certainly looks like it will put up with that life a little better than many cheap, lightweight charge cables sold for phones. But again, any USB Type-C charge cable will work just fine. But that's what I've got for you right now as far as accessories and such go. I'll be keeping myself open to reviews of such devices and I've already got one or two coming in as review samples, so keep an eye open for those videos in the days following the Switch launch. I've got a funny feeling there'll be many kinds of interesting accessories for the Switch as we go along. One that we haven't seen so far, but that I am expecting, is a breakout cable so you can attach to the USB socket on the bottom of the thing and then it breaks out into power and HDMI so you can quickly hook up your screen to a TV or a capture device for instance without having to move the dock about or get a second dock. But anyway, this video was about what is going to be out there on launch day and that was speculation. So thanks for watching, I am Blunty and I will catch you next time.